and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the music of Carl Hoff and his orchestra, our singing star Amy Arnell, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub who went caught putting a football in his Uncle Artie Seven's pocket because he heard him say his grandfather was going to kick off. Godly said, I'm a bad boy! Hey, Costello. Costello. What's the idea of coming in here with those overhalls and straw hats? Gardening clothes, Abbott. What do you mean? I've been out working in the garden all morning, and I planted two acres of mashed potatoes. Now, wait a minute. How, how can you plant mashed potatoes? I use a hammer. I... <laughs> I'll... <laughs> I'll get you some gardener. Mm. What else did you plant? Well, I planted raw onions, and then a raw radishes. And then I put some peas, and another raw radishes. And then I got some lettuce, and another raw radishes. Some more beans, another raw radishes. Uh, and some more beans, and another raw radishes. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Why did you put every other row radishes? I can't help it. Radishes always repeat on me. I... <laughs> well, forget about it. Let's drop the radishes. Come on, please. Let's drop the radishes. Let's get on. Well, I won't do any good. I... Don't let come right up again. I look, I... <laughs> Costello. Didn't you didn't you plant any any tomatoes? Huh? I say, didn't you plant any tomatoes? <laughs> yeah, I planted raw tomatoes, one inch apart. Costello, the, now that's too close together. It will squeeze the tomato and, and, and into a funny shape. And... So what? So what? What do you mean, so what? Did, did you ever see a short, fat tomato? Yeah, I danced with one last night at the Palladium. <laughs> oh, talk sense, please. You talk sense, Costello. How, how's the dirt around your place, Lou? I don't know. I haven't heard any lately. No, no, no. I'm talking about the soil. What state is your soil in? The state of California, you dope. No, no, no. I'm, ta I'm talking about the condition of the ground. How's the dirt? Oh, it's no good. It's full of worms. I... <laughs> I'm trying to find out if you have any weeds. Huh? I'm trying to find out if you have any weeds on your Boy, have I got weeds. I spent an hour this morning pulling on a big piece of double grass. And I pulled, and I pulled, and I pulled. And what happened? Finally, the devil came up and said, Look, Costello, when I want you, I'll send for you. <laughs> well, listen, Costello, I'd better help you. By the way, what are you putting in those two acres in back of the barn? Hadley it till I find my place. <laughs> you know those two new acres you have in back of the barn? What are you, what are you planning in back there? Are you yeah, yeah, to yeah. talk? My goodness, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You, know what, <laughs> you realize... Huh? Do you realize what you're doing? What? What are you planting in those uh, acres? Oh, I'm putting a whole thing of Mexican jumper beans. And then when they grow up, I'll feed the Mexican jumper beans to the cows. Yes. It makes the cow easier to milk. Makes the cow easier to milk? Yeah, when the cow is full of Mexican jumper beans, I just grab a hole and hang on while the cow jumps up and down, up and down. Oh, Costello, talk. <laughs> Say it, will you please? <laughs> Can you please talk, Sam? Well, I've got to leave now, Abbott. I've got to go out in the orchard and hang prunes on all orange trees. Hang prunes on your orange trees? Mm -hmm. Who told you to do that? My Uncle Artie Stebbins. Uh, Uncle Artie Stebbins. He said my orange trees needed pruning. Oh, <laughs> what a dope. Your uncle, meant, your uncle meant you should get a ladder and saw the limbs. Did you saw the limbs? Early I saw the limbs. They were hanging right in front of me. No, no, no. I mean, did you saw the limbs off the trees? No, I saw the limbs on the trees. Look, Costello, I'm trying to tell you that your trees need trimming. Mm. You, you've got to trim it before the sap rises. i got to trim it before the sap rises? That's right. What time do you get up? No. Oh. <laughs> Please, Costello. Now, if you want to have good oranges, you've not only got to trim the tree, but you must put a smudge pot under it. A what? A smudge pot. Don't you know what a smudge pot is? <laughs> oh, sure. A smudge pot is a tin can that smokes and burns oil. And you can find them on any used car lot in Hollywood. No, no. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Tell me, what kind of oranges grow in your trees? Oh, the regular kind. Round ones. Uh, are they, uh, <laughs> Look, please. Are they Valencia or uh, naval oranges? They're naval oranges. Uh, how do you know? I saw Sarah picking some. <laughs> how can you be so stupid? You can tell the difference between oranges by the color of the juice. Did you ever squeeze one of your oranges? Yeah. Well, what came out? Milk. Milk. <laughs> How could oranges have milk in them? Now tell me that. I got the tree from a nursery. Oh, come on, Tom. <laughs> come with me. We're going out in the backyard and look at your orange tree. I'm really after them tonight, ain't come I? Come on, now. Wait a minute. 
Hear hey, what I tell you? We're going out in the backyard. Look at your trees. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, look out that window. There's a great big crow sitting up in your tree. Hey, that crow's got a lot of nerve. Abbott, hand me my sawed off shotgun. Okay. Hey, this gun hasn't got any handle. How do you like that? I sawed off the wrong end. <laughs> wait a Watch what you're doing. You're pointing that gun right at me. Don't do you, worry, Abbott. Wait a minute. Do you want to shoot me? I've got my finger over the hole. Oh, keep it there. <laughs> Get him back, Abbott. I'll teach that crow to eat my oranges. Watch me get him. Was that the crow? Yeah, that's the biggest old crow in this neighborhood. That's Mrs. Niles. That's terrible, Costello. Come on, let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Here she comes, oh, Costello. There you are, you little fat assassin. <laughs> oranges in my bucket. That'll teach you to keep your bucket out of my tree. I'm tired of people striking my oranges. Your oranges? Why? It so happens, Costello, that your orange tree hangs over into my yard. And the law says that whatever hangs over my fence belongs to me. Oh, yeah? Yes. <laughs> now, look, Mrs. Niles. Did you ever see a fat man standing at a bar? Yes, what about it? Does the part that hangs over belong to the bartender? Get out of here. You know there ain't no answer to that? I know, all right, don't answer. Costella, apologize to Mrs. Niles for knocking her out of that tree. She ought to apologize to me. What did I do? You fell on my head and bent my hollyhock assistant. <laughs> Costello, you are not going to get away with this. I'm going to take you to court. I'm going to charge you with assault. I'll charge you with battery. I'll charge you with mayhem, and I'll charge you with attempted manslaughter. And it'll cost you a thousand dollars. What do you think of that? You can charge that too. <laughs> There were throat specialists and doctors who concentrate on the nervous system. There were diagnosticians and cardiologists and ophthalmologists. Doctors in each and every branch of medicine among the 113,000 doctors covered in a recent nationwide survey. It was a survey of cigarette preference. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor, was the gist of the query made by three leading independent research organizations. And the brand most named was Camel. Camel. Rich, full-flavored, cool, and mild. Truly a superb blend of costlier tobaccos. Try Camels, then, on your own tea zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat. A most critical laboratory for the testing of any cigarette. You, like so many doctors, may find that Camels suit your tea zone to a T. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. <laughs> For camel fans everywhere, Carl Hoff and the orchestra play Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. I'm looking for Lou Costello. I'm Lou Costello. I am Sheriff Yapra Carisi. <laughs> Mr. Costello, I'm here to serve you with a subpoena. Thanks. I don't care for some. Some, some what? Some peanuts. <laughs> no, the subpoena is for assault. Oh, some salted peanuts. <laughs> I still don't want none. Costello, this, this means that Mrs. Niles is going to press her suit against you. She can't press her suit against me, Abbott. I don't, I don't care for the lady. <laughs> Young man, you can't refuse this subpoena. I'm an officer of the law. 
Oh, you're an officer of the law. That's right. Then you're a public servant. Yes, I am. Get me a glass of water. <laughs> Take it easy, Lou. Look, you little peep squeak. <laughs> Don't get funny with me. See this scar? Yeah. Gunfight, 1941. You see this scar? Yeah. Vaccination, 1946. <laughs> and boy, did that pick out. Young man, you forget that I'm a sheriff. How do I know you're the sheriff? Read what it says on this badge. Vote for Hoover. <laughs> Darn it, I always wear the wrong one. <laughs> well, Costello, the subpoena says that you are to appear in court tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to answer Mrs. Niles' charge. Now, what do you say? Abbott, I'm too young to go to jail. To think that I, a poor boy who has never been away from my mother's April string, shall become a victim of foul circumstances to be incarcerated behind cold gray walls like a common criminal, to be shunned by the people of society. Alas and alack, alack and alack. <laughs> do, you really, do you really feel that way, Castello? No, but Universal Studios told me to hammer it up tonight if I got a chance. All right, look. <laughs> stop, stop talking like a dog, please. This is serious, Lou. The first thing you've got to do is uh, get out and get some character witnesses. That won't do no good, Abbott. You mean you have no witnesses? I got no character. Oh, <laughs> don't talk then. Oh, we've got to get out and get some character witnesses. Come on. Fine. <laughs> yeah, but I know where I can get a good witness. Let's stop in and see my old girlfriend, Tessie Tinfoil. Woo! <laughs> Men, come in! <laughs> How are you, Tessie? You certainly look wonderful. Well, thank you, my little fat lover boy. Everyone tells me I have an hourglass figure. It looks like all the sand stopped at half past four. <laughs> But really, Tessie, you look lovely in those sunset bus slacks. What do you mean, sunset bus slacks? Standing room only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Louie, you say the cutest thing. <laughs> oh, this kid's gonna lay an egg. <laughs> you know, I was in Griffith Park last night, and the benches were applauding. I was in Griffith Park last night, and the benches were applauding. Hope gets nothing with it. I don't expect nothing. <laughs> Costello, you came here looking for a witness, remember? Oh, yes. Tessie, could you go to the courthouse with me tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock? Oh, I'd love to, Louie. But I'm giving a lecture on biology tomorrow morning. You know, biology is one of my favorite subjects. And I can safely say that I know more about the human body than anybody else. You should. You had one longer than anybody else. <laughs> well, you didn't get yourself a witness there. Let's go next door and see Scotty Brown. He'll vouch for me. I wish you would not pounce so hard on the door, laddies. There's a burglar under the bed. A burglar under the bed? Didn't you call the police? No, the burglar's asleep, and when he wakes up, I'm going to charge him for a night's lodging. <laughs> hey, Scotty, I have to go to court at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'd like to have you appear as a character witness for me. I'm very sorry, laddie, but I have to go to the doctor's in the morning to have my hand dressed. I got a terrible burn between my thumb and my index finger. How did you burn your finger, Scotty? Well, a bunch of my Scotch friends and I had a smoker last night. And I was 13th on the match. Scotty, can't we just come in for a minute and talk to you? Uh, no, you can't. My wife is in the living room taking a bath. Your wife is taking a bath in the living room? Aye, laddie. The people upstairs let their bathtub run over, and it's leaking through our ceiling, and my wife is standing under the leak taking a shower. <laughs> well, Castello, you haven't got a character witness yet. Wait a minute, Abbott. There's my friend, Bessie May Mucho. She's getting out of the car. Oh, yo-ho, Bessie! Oh, hello, boys. I haven't time to talk to you now. I'm on my way to the Santa Fe Railroad Depot. Santa Fe Depot? Uh? Oh, Abbott! You know what that is. That's where you buy your train tickets. <laughs> where are you going, Bessie? I'm taking the Santa Fe back to Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Yes. You know where Cincinnati is. Oh, sure. That's back in the state of oh hoo hoo <laughs> I'm going back there to be Toastmaster at a banquet given by the Chamber of Commerce. What could be more thrilling than being surrounded by a bunch of men at a banquet? I'd rather sit around a weenie roost with a bunch of girl scoots. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to dosh along now. The hustle of this to you. And an oyster and a kisser to you, too. Costello, <laughs> yes. what are you going to do now? Well, hey, 
You know what I think, Abbott? What? I'm getting tired of asking my friends to be character witnesses. No. You can always get more out of a stranger. I'm going to ask that new man that just moved in next door. Come on. I'll, I'll tell him we're Abbott and Costello, and I'll bet he'll do anything for us. Go ahead. Well? <laughs> what do you want? Mister, you're not in very good mood this morning. Who would be? I've been listening to the radio. These lousy, corny comedians and their bum jokes, tying prunes on an orange tree. Yeah. Hourglass figure with a sand stuck in one end. Yeah. What do they think we listeners are, a bunch of morons? Thousands of dollars a week for stale jokes. I'd just like to get my hands on one radio comedian. I'd throttle him. I'd tear him to bits. I'd break every bone in his body. I'd ram every one of those corny jokes down his throat. Bill, who are you? John's other wife. <laughs> this month of April marks the birthday of a great man of medicine. And this, in a humble and respectful way, is a salute to him. His name, Dr. William Henry Welch, pioneer in pathology, preventive medicine, public health, and sanitation. His researches are famous. His teaching and writings influence the entire medical thought of the country. So, this salute in his honor, and to every doctor before him and after him, whose lives and works are basic threads in the very fabric of civilization. The makers of camels cannot help but be proud of the standing of this cigarette in the medical profession. The query, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor, was put to 113,000 doctors by three leading independent research organizations. The brand named most was Camel. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. And here is Camel's lovely Amy Arnell to bring you her celebrated personality. When Madame Pompadour was on a ballroom floor, said all the gentlemen, obviously... The madam had the cutest personality. And think of all the books about Du Barry's look. What was it made her the toast of Paris? She had a well developed personality. And what did Romeo see in Juliet? A Piro in Pirate. Oh, Jupiter and you know, you know, I know. And when Salome danced and had the boys in trance, no doubt it must have been easy to see that she knew how to use her personality. And what did Harry J. see in Betty G. Or Garson G. in Gable C. Or Bing and Bob in Dot Lamore? Who's your amour? I've got the Gravel Grace. I've got a Gravel face. Except I've had it much longer than she. See if I only had her personality. Order in the court. Order in the court. Order. the caller. The court of common pleas is now in session. The case of Mrs. Niles versus Lou Costello. The prisoner will now step to the bar. <laughs> the prisoner is charged with perforating Mrs. Niles' bucket while she was filling it with oranges. Look, 
Look, Mrs. Niles, why can't we drop this case? I didn't mean to shoot at you. Honest, I didn't. I wouldn't harm anybody. I was brought up always to be kind to everybody because I am a Boy Scout. You're a Boy Scout? What are those two stripes on your arm? I belong to the Skunk Patrol. <laughs> Costello, you're not going to talk me out of pressing my suit. Bailiff, I demand that you swear in this defendant. Uh, very well. The defendant, Lou Costello, raise your right hand and swear on this bar of soap. Swear on a bar of soap? What for? We want you to come clean. <laughs> Getting ready to send me to jail. You got to do something. Don't worry, Costello. I've got you the greatest lawyer in town. Yes, and here I am, your old friend, Melonhead. Ah, Costello, I'm a lawyer of the old school. Looks like the old school needs a new roof. Look. <laughs> now, now, don't you make remarks about my bald head, Costello. After all, I'm a good egg. That's the first egg I ever saw with a pair of ears. <laughs> hey, yeah, but I don't want this guy to defend me. Why not? I'd rather have my other uncle, Jay Emanuel. He's the greatest and the cleverest lawyer in the country. Oh, yeah? Where did he study law? He went to Vassar for four years. You ah. idiot. Vassar <laughs> happens to be a girl's school. Well, it takes a smart guy to get away with that, don't it? All right, Costello. Here comes the judge. Everybody rise. Presenting his honor, Judge Phil Pop Storch to you. All right, Bailiff, bring in the hip, bring in the hip, bring in the hip, bring in the case. <laughs> Will the jury please be seated? <laughs> I always forget to put the seats in the jury box. <laughs> Is the defense ready? Your Honor, I would like to have a few minutes to draw up my briefs. Now, how do you like that? I'm going to go to jail, and this guy has to stop to pull up his shorts. <laughs> well, now, Costello, his briefs for paper. No wonder he, he rustles when he walks. Order in the court. The defendant will kindly address the bench. Hiya, bench. Um, <laughs> Costello, let your lawyer do the talking. Your Honor, I am representing this defendant, Mr. Costello. It seems that my client, with malicious intent took a shot at a poor, defenseless woman while she was picking oranges out of a tree. He knocked her to the ground. He ruined her bucket, and he did her... He did her, Your Honor. He did this woman great bodily injury. The defense rests. Wait a minute, Melonhead. Whose side are you on? Hello, kindly sit down in front. But, Judge... I said sit down in front. I don't bend that way. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Do you realize I'm justice? And I'm justice, too. Justice who? Just as good as you are. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Costello. You can't talk that way to the judge. That's the most contemptible thing I've heard in all my years at the bar. Well, a little less time at the bar and you wouldn't be so contemptible. Costello, I told you to let your lawyer do the talking. That's right, Abbott. Costello, you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Your Honor, we plead insanity. What the... case is a farce. I demand that you find Costello guilty. But, Mrs. Niles, I can't do that. I haven't heard the evidence. Oh, please, Judge. I appeal to you as a man. You don't even appeal to me as a woman. <laughs> I object! You object? What for? I haven't had a line in two pages. <laughs> well, stick around. Stick around and I'll give you a sentence. Yeah, Costello. <laughs> I'm telling you to keep quiet. Hey, You're only making things worse. Look, Your Honor, I'd like to plead my own case. I couldn't do anything wrong, really. I couldn't because I've always been very bashful and shy. I remember on my 12th birthday, my mother and my father would give me, they gave me a nice little dresser for my bedroom. I was so bashful, I kept the dresser turned to the wall. You kept the dresser turned to the wall? Why? I didn't want the drawers to show. <laughs> Costello, I'll listen to your plea if you can produce a character with us. Okay. I'd like to present as a character witness a young girlfriend of mine, Miss Fifi LeBlanc. Here I am, Monsieur Costello. Come on over here and kiss your poor old father. <laughs> I object. This young lady has nothing to present to this court. Are you kidding? <laughs> Fifi, I knew your big brown eyes would get him. <laughs> Fifi, will you kindly take a chair? No, let her sit up here on the bench with me. <laughs> I'm lonesome. <laughs> now, uh, Miss LeBlanc, kindly tell the court your full name. Mademoiselle Fifi H. LeBlanc. Uh, what does the H stand for? 
Hillside 2183. I object! <laughs> you object? Yeah, she gave me Hillside 2184. <laughs> uh, what are you doing tonight, BB? Oh, I'm sorry, Judge, but I'm going steady with Monsieur Costello. I will be true to him as long as he lives. Costello, I sentence you to be hanged at dawn. <laughs> Your Honor, you can't do this. My friend Costello is an honest man, an innocent man. He didn't mean to shoot at Mrs. Miles. I don't care about that part. <clears throat> Uh, he has no business wasting the time of a beautiful girl like Titi LeBlanc. A man as ugly as Costello couldn't possibly have any integrity or character. <laughs> in fact, Costello, you are entirely lacking in personal charm. I wouldn't say that. Just put a razor in my hand and you couldn't tell me from Gregory Peck. <laughs> Gregory Peck? Why, you worm, there isn't a woman in town that would take a second look at you. Mrs. Niles is right, Costello. But I'll tell you what I'll do. As the judge in this case, I will let you go free if you can get some lady in this courtroom to come up here and kiss you. Are you kidding? Oh, thank you very much, Judge. I'll show you how you appeal to women. Ladies, this is your chance to kiss me. The line forms on the right. <laughs> Tom, Tom, come on. Isn't there some good-looking young woman in the audience that would like to come up here and kiss me? Hmm? <laughs> Is any middle-aged lady? Any old lady? Any old man? There, Costello, that proves you have no charm. You're going to jail. Oh, wait a minute, Judge. Somebody is pushing through the crowd now. Look at them. Push them right through the crowd, Judge. Oh, they're going to come up to kiss me. Ah, oh, there you are, darling. I knew you'd show up. Come on here and kiss me, honey. Thank you, Elsie. <laughs> Adam and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men in the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight we hail the 106th Infantry Golden Lion Division, heroes of San Vies in the Battle of the Bulge. Since the beginning of the war, the makers of camels have sent more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. But now, with demobilization in progress, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to U.S. Army AAF Regional Hospital, Hamilton Field, California, U.S. Naval Hospital, Bremerton, Washington, U.S. Marine Hospital, Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, New York, Veterans Hospital, Perry Point, Maryland, Veterans Hospital, Chillicothe, Ohio, in your honor, men of the Golden Lion Division. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Well, Costello... <laughs> you kept yourself out of jail by kissing a cow, didn't you? I knew I wouldn't go to jail, Abbott. I've never done anything wrong. Nothing at all. In fact, if the audience will just stay for an hour after the show, I'd like to tell you the story of my life. No, no! Not that! Anything but that! <laughs> wait a minute! Hey, wait a minute! My life story happens to be very interesting. Oh, yeah? Well, tell me, Fatso, what did your mother and father say the day you were born? Why bring that up? That's what I thought they said. Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. It's time. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a tea. C A M E L S. Why smoke a pipe? For pleasure, of course. So why not get the most pipe pleasure? How? With Prince Albert tobacco. Why? Because it's choice tobacco, crimp cut to burn slow, cool. Because it's specially treated to take out tongue bites. Does that make a difference? You bet. Why more pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco on earth? Try P.A. today. Saturday night, be sure to listen to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry. You'll hear Red Foley, Grand Ole Opry's sensational new singer. He's got a voice that's romantic as moonlight on the mountains, warm as southern hospitality. And the way Red Foley sings our great American folk songs makes mighty fine listening. Remember Grand Ole Opry Saturday night on NBC with the Duke of Paducah, Minnie Pearl, and Red Foley. 
Be sure to listen at this very same time next week for the Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes. Thursday night is All-Star Night on NBC. Stay tuned in for Rudy Valley over most of these stations. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>